What's going on, Jeff fans? Uh, most of you guys either know me probably from NYJFTV, Talk Jets Radio, or some of the articles that I do on NYJetsFans.com. But when I'm not talking Jets, I spend a lot of my time in the classroom. It's a big passion of mine. I'm a school teacher. I love working with kids. And after what I saw uh, after the Jaguars win on Sunday, I, I felt obligated to kind of educate some Jet fans and, to, and just give a little reminder about how truly bad John Idzik was, okay? And, and don't think we're going to let McCagnan off the hook. We're going to go through all of McCagnan's moves too, and then we're going to take a look at both of them and, and just see how bad... John Idzik truly left the state of this franchise after two years, okay? Some people say he had a plan, he needed more time to execute it. I'm going to show you right now, that couldn't be any further from the truth, okay? So let's take a look. We'll start with the draft. Dean Milliner, ninth overall, out of football already. You got Sheldon Richardson, you got two years of production out of him. Then you got back-to-back -back years with suspensions, driving 140 miles an hour with weed and a kid in the car. Trade him off. So again, two first-round picks you didn't really get much out of. Second round pick, Geno Smith, backup quarterback. Third round pick, Brian Winters, nice selection there. Can't fault that one. And then fifth, sixth, and seventh round, Odeyabushi, Will Campbell, and of course everybody's hero now because he scored a touchdown in the playoffs, Tommy Bohannon. All right, so really not that great right there. Um, you know, Sheldon looked okay early on, and then he completely fell off, so not, not a great draft. And free agency was even worse. I mean, look at some of these names here. You're talking Mike Goodson, Antoine Barnes, Dewan Landry, Ryan Quigley, Calvin Pace, Kellen Winslow, and we all know what he was doing when he was a Jet. Uh, Leger uh, Le Dujable, Jeremiah Bell, David Nelson, Zach Sudfeld, who can't even go up for a jump ball in Green Bay, Brady Quinn, Ed Reed. I mean, look at some of those names. What are, what are we building for the future there with those guys? Nothing. Th those are veterans that were past their prime that really weren't going to add anything to your future, okay? A couple decent trades, though. I'll give him that fourth-round pick for Ivory. I thought that was a steal at the time. And then getting a first-rounder back for Revis after uh, his ACL surgery. So not terrible with the trades. But 2014, this is arguably, I would like to hear an argument against it, this is probably the single worst off-season and in-season moves any general manager in the history of sports has probably ever had. Okay, We all know the exit, uh, the exit 12, and let, let's go through all of this here. Okay, Another first-round pick, Calvin Pryor out of the league. Jay Samaro, second round pick, practice squad. Uh, third round pick, Dexter McDougal. Got cut uh, two times this year after getting traded. He's unsigned right now. Three fourth round picks. Three of them. Jalen Saunders, Shaq Evans, Dakota Dozier. Are you kidding me? Fifth round pick, Jeremiah George. Four sixth round picks. Brandon Dixon, at least he got Quincy and Nunwa. IK and Polly, Taj Boyd, Trevor Riley. That is... Wow. We're, we're going to say he had a plan? He had a plan to build through the draft? Stop. Just stop. Please stop. Let's look at free agency. Give him some props on Decker. All right? But then signs Brino Giacomini, an absolute penalty machine. Uh, tried to sign a cost-effective option instead of bringing back Austin Howard. That blew up in his face. Mike Vick. Look at AWOL. Look at him over here. There was a million free agent cornerbacks that offseason. He signs the one guy that goes AWOL. CJ2K, Jason Babin, Marcus Williams, TJ Graham, Chris Owosu. Now, again, I know these aren't all the moves, but these were most of the, the key signings that he had. What is still on the team? What is still in the league right now that's really making any kind of contributions? Anything? Anything? <laughs> let's go to this. Let, let's go to these two things right here. All right? He had a plan to build through the draft, right? He's going to build through the draft. He has a plan. All right. After a 1-6 start, he trades away a draft pick for Percy Harvin. Are you freaking kidding me? And you know what? At least Mike McCagnan saved this by releasing Harvin. But you you damn sure do not make that move unless you're planning on having Percy Harvin on your roster the following season. That means he was fully prepared to not only pay Percy Harvin $10 million, but to also give up a fourth-round pick instead of the sixth-round pick for him. Okay? There is a reason. There is a reason. John Idzik is a glorified cap guy. That's all he is. He's a glorified cap analyst. He is not a talent evaluator. You go to the Jaguars staff directory, I swear, it takes like three scrolls before you finally reach his name on order of importance. Okay? He is insignificant. He cannot evaluate talent. And let's just take a look at this. All right? Four of his 12 draft picks were released before the end of their first season. 
including Quincy Anunwa. Including Quincy Anunwa. This guy cannot evaluate talent to save his life. And he deserved every bit of what he got from Jeff Hand. He deserved to get fired. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at Mike McCagnan now. Um, one of the things that I think you're going to see when we look at McCagnan uh, across the board that he's added quality depth as well as a few young foundational players, okay? Uh, he's done far from a perfect job, certainly has some, some bad picks and some bad signings in there, but at least you could see a direction. You see a foundation starting to get built here, okay? And not only that, he's got, you know, after they release Mo, he's going to have $100 million and plenty of draft picks to work with. Um, but, again, we'll start with 2015, and listen, nobody's going to defend that draft in 2015. Um not a very good one. Leo, the one pick that uh, I think everybody probably likes. Tough to knock that one, especially looking at what's happened with Mo and Sheldon. Um, both those guys have gone completely downhill. you got to have an anchor on your D-line. So that was a good pick up there. Unfortunately, with Devin Smith and Lorenzo Malden, those guys have been hurt. So having a true evaluation on them is very difficult. Uh, I think both of them did flash a little bit their first year. Uh, Smith has some speed. He was getting open a little bit. Unfortunately, Ryan Fitzpatrick had never hit him. Um, and Walden, I think so, uh, he showed you a little bit as a situational pass rusher. I don't know if he's ever going to be more than that. But again, both of them have to get healthy and actually get on the field. Okay? Um, no defending. Uh, you know, the rest of the picks, Petty, um, Jarvis Harrison is out of the league, and then Deion Simon. But where Mike McCagden earned his Executive of the Year title is what he did in free agency and uh, with a couple of trades. The fifth-round pick for Brandon Marshall, sixth-round pick for Ryan Fitzpatrick, both of whom set team records. That was phenomenal value right there. Hard to knock that. Uh, free agency, James Carpenter, great move, guy that's still here, possibly our best offensive lineman. Uh, Buster Screen, who's been a little bit up and down. Some not-so-good signings in there, Cromartie, Gilchrist, guy like Kellen Davis, but also some good moves under the radar. Julian Stanford, Josh Martin still here. And even Revis, his first year, he played like a number one corner. I, I don't know too many people that were upset at that deal. You know, he played like a number one corner. And once he fell off the face of the planet in 2016, you were able to get out from underneath that contract. And I, and I think that's the biggest, biggest thing uh, about Mike McCagman is that he did take the chance and go for it uh, in his first year when he came in. They had the money and they had to spend it. And they had guys on the team like Harris and Decker, uh, DeBrickishaw, Mangold. They had a few pieces that were locked into contracts already, and they had money that they had to spend. So they spent it on guys that ultimately in their first year did produce. And 10 wins in any other year in 2016 or 2017, that makes you the playoffs. Jets luck, we don't get in the playoffs. All right, so let's look at 2016. Darren Lee, first year wasn't so great. Second year, he's really come on. I, I like what he's starting to show. Hackenberg, there's really no defending that pick at this point. I defended it for a while. I still like the kid. He's 22 years old. I think he's got some good skills. Um, I, I would love to see him get some more time to develop, but I, I just don't think that's going to happen. They're going to add another quarterback this year. Um, so if you want to throw that one in there with, with Pryor and Jason Morrow, I'm not going to stop you. But you look at the rest of them, some pretty good picks in here. Jordan Jenkins, I love that one. He's going to be here for a while. Justin Burris, some depth at corner. Very under-the-radar move with Brandon Shell, Fifth-round pick. He traded a 2017 fourth-round pick to move up and get him. I think McCagan recognized, you know, 2017 wasn't as strong with offensive linemen. Moved up, got Shell, our future right tackle. Great move there. Uh, our punter, Lachlan Edwards, and then uh, Sharon Peak, who's still floating around on the practice squad. All right, and then you go to free agency. Steve McClendon, a nice cost-effective option instead of giving Damon Harrison that big contract. Uh, you're talking some other not-so-great moves. Forte, Kyrie Robinson, Jarvis Jenkins. But again, not a whole lot of money to work with. Um, the, the two things I'll, I'll jump to right here, paying Mo and paying Fitz, I wasn't a big fan of either of them. You had Fitz at $8 million. There was no reason to go up to 12. He had no other suitors for him. Um, and then the same thing with Mo. You had him on the franchise tag coming off the broken leg. Uh, I didn't see any reason for them to, to give him an extension there. But, you know, I, I think the, the thing was they wanted to bring that team back from 2015, the team that won 10 games, and give it one more shot. And as we saw... Everything that could have gone wrong, it went wrong last year, and they were in position to at least get rid of everybody and start fresh, okay? Um, just quickly touching on the undrafted free agents, Robbie Anderson, obviously the key guy in that group. Idzik did not have one undrafted free agent that has come close to doing anything that Robbie Anderson's done in the league already. Um, a few other guys that are still developing, Doug Middleton, Claude Pallone, um, Lawrence Thomas, who's getting some time at fullback, and then Jalen Marshall, 
kind of came on strong and then has fallen off a little bit. Uh, but you go to 2017, and, and this is where I, I really, really like what McCagney's done in a year where we didn't spend a lot of money. Um, you know, he made some moves in the draft, made a couple nice trades. So let's break this down. First round and second round, absolute home runs. We needed two safeties, and he got just an awesome, versatile combination there that's going to be here for a while. I love what he did there. Third and fourth round, we got two receivers, Darius Stewart, Chad Hansen. Both didn't really see the field a lot. I like Stewart's athleticism. I, I think he's going to be a player. Hansen's got some nice hands. He can run some good routes. I think those guys are going to contribute. They're still rookies, so let's not uh, grade them yet. Um, you got Leggett and Donahue. Both those guys were hurt, so you can't really grade them at all. Uh, Eli McGuire, he got on the field. He made some plays at running back. Hard to knock that in the sixth round. And then you got Jeremy Clark and Derek Jones. Again, two big-bodied corners, and, and they're going to compete. You know, you, you got guys like them, uh, Daryl Roberts, uh, Justin Burris, so some nice young corners here. All right, They're not your number one or your number two, but again, quality depth. You want to have that competition for those spots on the back end. All right, uh, You look at free agency, Kelvin Beecham, nice stopgap left tackle. You got Josh McCown, who had a career year. Um, Mo Claiborne, who was very solid the first half of the year when he was healthy, but unfortunately he never stays healthy, and you know the, the injuries kind of caught up with him in the second half. It's going to be very interesting to see if they decide to bring him back. Um, Catanzaro, he was pretty good. Coney Ealy was a nice pickup um, right before the season started. David Bass and Xavier Cooper, they had some moments. Curley was effective earlier in the year. So again, the under-the-radar moves, all right, we have a lot of depth and even some starters in that group. Something that John Idzik did not do and could not do, okay? And then you look at the trades. These were some awesome deals that we got. Getting Demario Davis, the heart and soul of our defense for Calvin Pryor, that was an awesome move. Um, getting rid of McDougal for Terrence Brooks, he contributed a lot early in the year and kind of fell off a little bit, didn't see the field as much. Sheldon Richardson, when everyone thought he had no more value, McCagan pulls a second-round pick in Jermaine Curse. That was an awesome deal. And then, you know, the, the future fifth-round pick next season for Rashard Robinson, you know, after the arrest, who knows what's going to happen with him. Um, he's still a young corner. You, you, you made the trade, needing a corner and knowing he had some issues, hoping you can get him right. But again, you got a couple young corners, as I already pointed out. Those guys are going to be fighting on the back end. So all in all, from what McCagney's done, as I mentioned earlier, he's got to address those main four positions with high-end talent. Okay, That's what this roster is lacking right now. That's why I think we haven't been able to close out games. But it is impressive to me that throughout the season, we were competing against teams that are clearly much better and have a better roster. Okay, And you can't have it both ways because either Todd Bowles is a great coach or McCagney's actually got you some young talent here. They just need a little bit more at those premium positions, and that's going to be his job this offseason. He's, he's going to have $100 million, all those draft picks, got to get a quarterback, got to solidify the O-line, get a pass rusher, get some corners. If he does that, the rest of the roster is pretty damn solid. So we'll see what happens. All right, now lastly, let's just take a comparative analysis uh, of a few different things, all right? I'm going to start off draft picks that are still in the NFL. Obviously, I realize Idzik's guys have had a little bit longer, so they have more time to, to not stick around. You know, if we check this again in two more years, when some of McCagney's picks are in their fourth or fifth year, I'm sure that number is going to go up. All right, but still, right now, 11 of Idzik's picks are still in the league, which means eight of them are out of the league, including some first round picks and some other high draft picks. Uh, McCagney, 21 of 22 are still in the league. The only one not, Jarvis Harrison. You go to starters. John Idzik drafted four starters out of 19 picks. Pretty damn bad. Uh, McCagnin, 7 of 22. Not a whole lot better, but again, his guys are much younger. They still have time to develop. It wouldn't shock me if a few of his other picks do end up developing into starters in the next year or two. Um, you look at rounds 1 to 3. This is insane. And again, this is where you cannot miss as a general manager. You cannot miss this badly on your first round picks. You can't. And that's why we have the problems that we do right now. From 2010 to 2014, we have next to nothing on our roster. You look at the teams that are competing right now, that, that's, that's their team leaders. That's the heart and soul of their team, those guys from, from 2010 to 2014. They're in their prime. That's what you need. We have nothing from those years. Okay? So, again, let's look at it. First round, Milner, Sheldon, and Pryor. 
versus Leo, Lee, and Adams. You tell me who you would want. Let's, let, let's be real here. All right, round two, Gino and Amaro versus Devin Smith, who again has been injured, Hackenberg, who still hasn't seen the field yet, and Marcus May, who obviously completely separates that group. He's been a home run. And then you look at round three, you could say Winners and Jordan Jenkins, they kind of cancel each other out as solid picks. But then Dexter McDougal versus Lorenzo Molden and Ardarius Stewart. Stewart, I think, is still going to be a part of this team in the future. I like his skill set. So, again, it's just a matter of getting those guys to develop a little bit more. But, you know, these guys have had four or five years, and what have they done? What have they done? Okay? Undrafted free agents, some of the names uh, Idzik brought in. And, again, I know these aren't everybody, but uh, I'm not leaving out anybody that did anything good. Okay? So, Cavalli, Wesley Johnson, Ryan Spadola, Rontez Miles, Dalton Freeman. I mean, those were some of the, the key names that I found. Robbie Anderson obviously sets this group apart. He was the one home run there. Lawrence Thomas, a nice solid pick. Claude Pallone, Xavier Coleman, we'll see what those guys do. Jalen Marshall's kind of fallen off after a strong camp last year. So again, <laughs> it, it couldn't be any... Every check is in Mike McCagnin's column. Even look at some of the under-the-radar moves, okay? Like some of the, the smaller signings and some of the waiver wire pickups. Nothing that John Idzik added brought any type of value to the future of this franchise. Mike Goodson, Antoine Barnes, Dewan Landry, Jason Babin, Percy Hart, Kellen Winslow. What are we doing? What's the plan? I don't get it. Even you look at McCagnin's moves. These guys are still players. Demario, ASJ, McClendon, Julian Stanford, Josh Martin, Daryl Roberts, Eric Tomlinson. It's night and day, the difference between what Idzik was doing and what McCagnin's doing. Okay, It's definitely an argument that he has not addressed the, the, the core four that I mentioned before, you know, with quarterback, O-line, corner, and edge. Those are premium positions. He's got to address that. And thankfully, he's got the resources to do it this year. Okay? But we've now had four and five years to evaluate Idzik. And we've got four starters out of 19 picks. And even out of the 11 guys that are still in the league, besides the four starters, you're talking about nobody. You're, you're talking about guys like Jeremiah George, Brandon Dixon, Trevor Riley, Odea Bushi, Geno Smith. Those were the, those are some of the guys that are still in the league. And what are they doing? Again, it, it couldn't be any more clear that at the very least, McCagnin has built some solid depth, found just some pieces, and he's got the resources to make an impact in 2018. If he doesn't do it in 2018, he's going to be joining Idzik. Okay? But again, it, it, it's not even close when you look at the two of them. Okay? And again, I know that 90% of it, uh, 90% of the people that bring up Idzik, it's just trolls out there. But for the 5 to 10% of the people that truly, actually believe that he had some type of plan and he just needed more time to execute it, 